All right, today we are going to check out this Orbcom antenna. Uh, I saw this over on the Save It For Parts channel, uh, and I figured I'd get one and test it out myself. Hopefully this is helpful to the folks over there or other folks, but generally I can always use another antenna. This is the package it came in. We'll open it up. We'll go the opposite way. Why not? Why ruin a perfectly good label? There. Cool, cool. This, oh God. This. Ugh. There it is. Ugh. There it is. Cool. All right. Let's see. What we got. So here's the antenna, little helical design there, whatever these are, uh, and the bottom side. Oh, look, it does have a little connector on there. I thought I was going to have to solder something. I can work with that. It's got a little, what is that, M, little tiny connector on there, and it is an Orpcom. ST1004260001 Sierra Tango 1004260001 IDP, I don't know. Um, I could probably look up what this is, but I also have a piece of a test of equipment that will help us figure out what it is. So we'll fire this guy up. And this only covers up to 1.5 gig, uh, so L band. So if this is for something beyond L band, whatever, we're not going to be able to test it here. All right, so I'll put that here. So what we're going to use to test this is the VSWR bridge. So this is an additional piece of equipment you can get for your Rigel. Um, and it comes with the license that allows us to, to use this as a VSWR bridge. So this is really good for testing antennas. Um, I use this to test all my uh, all of my antennas, ham radio, non-ham radio, uh, astronomy, uh, SIGIN, you name it, right? It's really good for that. And the way this works is we plug this into the front end here and it allows us to use the tracking generator to generate a signal and then read the SWR back into the input on there. And we'll get a nice graph on here once this is attached. Uh, so for starters, we're going to have to hook this up. The way that we have, um, yeah, I could probably do it here. It might not be too heavy. So we're just going to attach this directly. I was thinking about using cables, but we'll just attach this directly. So we'll pop off our things here. And maybe while we're doing this, we'll power this guy off. Need to get a better mount for this. So we just put that on there like that. Make sure you screw them in at the same time. Otherwise, you, you don't want to torque it one way or the other. Super. Okay, that's on there tight. And then normally I keep a uh, UHF connector on here because most of the antennas I'm testing are our amateur eight you know in that band but it does have an end connector on here uh the only problem is sometimes that center pin comes out so we need to figure out a way of securing that nope didn't come out this time super all right so now we need an adapter to go from here to here right this is this little little tiny surface mount deal barely make it out there but there's a there's an adapter there um yeah there you go you can see it right there uh, it looks like you, the pad here, you could probably put an SMA or something on there. Maybe a, that's a separate project for later. So let's go to the kit. Let's see if we got it. Throw a bin of cables here. And there we go. So I sequester all of these little connectors in this pouch here because they tend to get damaged because they're very delicate. So we want to go from N to this guy, UFL, let's call it UFL. That's what this is, UFL. So this is this is what that would look like in a package, in the surface mount package. Okay, cool story. Uh, nope, 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 nope. 
close. Close. Mm -mm -mm. It's easier said than done. What? Look at that. I got the right cable. Oh my god. Should play the lottery today. Okay. Let's cut back away. I need it. Bag of small connectors. Super. Okay. Let's connect that onto there. This way. Let's show, one, show my work here. So we're gonna take that, connect that onto there. Boom. And then we'll connect that onto there. Um, I think maybe what the first thing we'll do is before we go and connect this antenna is we're going to calibrate the Rigel. Let me see if switching this light off helps. No, it doesn't really help. So we're not going to solder anything today, so we don't need that. So we're going to use our Rigel DSA815 Spectrum Analyzer, uh, Delta Sierra Alpha 815 Spectrum Analyzer with the VSWR bridge add-on. First thing we do is going to measurement. We're going to hit the measurement button, and then we're going to turn VSWR on. Once that's on, we're going to go into measurement setup, and we're going to calibrate open. All right, and then. I'm also going to go ahead and calibrate open with the cable attached just to reduce any any noise or loss from that. So we'll hook that up and let's do another calibrate open while we've got it there. Cool. Now we're ready to read our VSWRs. So we're going to hit VSWR and nothing yet. Let's just hook up this antenna and see what we got. All right. Well, look at that. Well, yeah, it's definitely definitely off our charts here. So let's go to, let's pick a frequency of, let's do 1.2. Oh, that's not what I want. That, well, 1.2 gigahertz. And we're going to do a span of eh, 600. Yeah, we're in the gigahertz range. That sounds good. And we're going to do our marker. Where is our marker? There's our marker. Hey, look at that. Cool. So here's our antenna. A little helical. We got it hooked up to the VSWR bridge into our Rigel. And let's see, our SWRs are pretty high in 1.1 gigahertz. So let's move up a little bit. Let's see where our first dip is at. So, eh, 1.3, got 2.4, so that's not great there. Let's go back this way. Yeah, not, not really meant for that. So 1.2, yeah, it's not great. But if we go all the way here to the high end, say 1.5, which is the maximum of this uh, thing. So we get good SWR starting at about, let's say 1.4, 1.43, right? So 1.4, 1.5 range. We're getting good and then beyond that i can't test beyond that here but that's what you get so it looks like this antenna is pretty good in the 1.5 gigahertz range we've got good swrs there and if we increase our ground plane here let's see if we touch this thing let's touch random stuff see what happens oh look at that oh i i got good swrs too take that off there yeah so it looks like this is made for about 1.5 gig no real significant change. I mean, obviously if I attenuate it with my hand, uh, or if I increase the ground plane here, it changes a little bit. But uh, there you go. Pretty cool. So this should be good to go for a 1.5 gig. If you're working with something in the 1.5 gig range, uh, at least as far as my test equipment can show us, this antenna would be good to go for that. There you go.